Hello all. Uh, first of all, thanks for being here. Now uh, we are really excited about this event, uh, and thanks to the folks at Freshworks for uh, pulling this together. Uh, and today we are going to uh, see a, a brief introduction about octane addition of Ember, and uh, also see how to uh, convert a classic Ember component into a cla octane component. You can follow along the slides at this URL. So I'm Gokul. I work as a front-end developer at Zoho, and you can find me on Twitter under this handle. So who are all new to Ember or just recently started with Ember? <laughs> Great. Uh, actually, Ember is a uh, JavaScript framework used to building uh, ambitious web apps. Uh, so what is ambitious web apps? Uh, uh, amb ambitious web apps are nothing but apps uh, uh, which have a lot of data and uh, contents flowing around. Um, em uh, Ember really emphasizes uh, convention over configuration. Uh, and recently, uh, Preston uh, put out his own version as uh, productivity through constraints. This is uh, exactly true because uh, Ember can be really productive once you are familiar with the core uh, through the well-defined constraints. And uh, that is the thing I really like about Ember. So let's break this uh, phrase in Octane Edition. So what are editions refers to? Uh, when a, a framework got a significant set of features uh, uh, along with the polished ecosystem such as uh, updated API docs, updated guides, uh, we call the scenario as an uh, edition. Uh, also, uh, in other JS communities, uh, uh, a major version such as Vue 3, uh, React 16 or 17 will be having a lot of new features and there will be huge first when they land. Uh, but in Ember, uh, we strictly follow uh, semantic versioning and the uh, major version will never contain any new feature, but uh, uh, it will only contain the removal of previously deprecated APIs. So we can think of uh, editions as a um, new release type. Uh, to tell other JS communities that Ember got updated to a greater level and it got uh, new feature sets and it's a time to uh, try them out. Uh, and um, essentially, um, uh, editions are uh, meant to be a happy point where users can uh, try all the new features without much frictions and uh, buggy edge cases. So what's Octane then? Octane is our first edition and uh, Octane improves the way we write our components today. Uh, Octane uh, really emphasizes on moving uh, along the JS community and uh, utilizes the native features as much as possible. And personally, I feel uh, working, with, working with Octane to be really uh, uh, refreshing and fun. Let's see how it goes. So these are all the features we are going to see about uh, Octane today. So uh, this is a, a classic uh, Ember component model uh, used to define a counter component. This counter component is going to uh, accept a argument max count up to which uh, the counter can be incremented and also the counter can be decremented till zero. Uh, this implementation got two computer properties and two actions. So we are going to uh, convert this uh, classic Ember uh, component into an Octane uh, component uh, step by step. First feature uh, what we are going to see is uh, uh, class um, uh, native um, uh, JS classes. Uh, we are we as a community are using uh, class models from the very beginning of the uh, Ember, Ember uh, lifecycle. Uh, Ember defines its own uh, class model, and uh, our application always extend uh, classes from one of the Ember's uh, base class, like Ember service or Ember component, etc. Uh, this Ember class model uh, dated way before the uh, proposal of JS, cl JS classes, uh, but today uh, uh, JavaScript has its own uh, class implementation and uh, it, it may be the best idea to uh, uh, use them as well. JavaScript classes are just, uh, uh, just JavaScript. We don't need to learn any magic, mag magic things around the uh, community to know Ember. So uh, obviously it will be e easier to teach new developers about uh, classes because uh, uh, the, the developers may already know how a class work or uh, uh, how somehow they need to know them. And uh, uh, because since it is uh, closer to uh, JS implementation, uh, the vast ecosystem uh, can uh, easily incorporate Ember. And we can uh, share uh, solutions between uh, communities because the underlying uh, cl classes will be same for all. Uh, we can extend the class functionalities and class field functionalities using decorators and we are going to see about decorators soon. As a bonus, uh, we can use private properties for real. So decorators are nothing but a logic uh, used to extend the functionality of a class field. Uh, for example, in this um, uh, counter class, uh, if I need to implement a debounce uh, uh, operation for this increment, increment uh, method, I can uh, create a new decorator uh, to, to implement that logic uh, the, uh, the, so that uh, the, this db defense decorator can be used anywhere in my app and not tied to this uh, particular method. And Ember got a few built-in um, 
de uh, decorators such, such as computer properties and uh, difference injections and uh, ember uh, also introduced uh, new uh, decorator called action this action decorators uh, are used to bind the proper disk context to the uh, applied method uh, using this uh, action decorators we can have uh, our action implementation anywhere in our app uh, not just the backing js class uh, a common use case would be having um, actions on the services uh, so if i can uh, use this uh, show current user method inside any uh, component uh, template and still can access the uh, service properties uh, without any issues uh, because uh, we bind those uh, methods with action uh, action decorator so it is a duty of action decorator to uh, to properly bind this context Speaking of the actions, uh, a new modifier called uh, on modifier has been introduced. The reason is because uh, the traditional action uh, decorate, uh, act and modifier or helper do a couple of magic things to get things working. For example, action decorators uh, implicitly bind the, this value and it uh, look up the string and uh, map, it, map it to the actu actual action function. So to be more uh, explicit and uh, uh, consistent, and this uh, uh, on modifier has been uh, introduced. The only work of on modifier is to bind the given event using the given handler. So we can use any of the valid HTML event to the uh, element using on modifiers like mouse over, drag, start, drag, stop, etc. Also, uh, this on modifier will not be having uh, impl implicit this binding. So, if you try to access this inside the handler, uh, Ember will throw an error that uh, you have to use action decorator in order to bind the proper context. So, it is the duty of action decorator to bind the proper this context to the handlers. So, if you need to uh, pass any argument to the function via template code, we need to use the uh, function helper. This is also introduced recently. So as a first step, we are going to convert our um, class uh, counter class into uh, native JS signature. Uh, then we have to rewrite our uh, computer properties as well as actions using decorators. Uh, here, uh, computer properties are uh, defined as getters in ES classes. You can see that the import statements are uh, not not at all changed because uh, the framework uh, modules are uh, compatible uh, both with the classic as well as the decorator syntax. So uh, this is the. Um, uh, angle bracket component invocation. Uh, so invoking a co component using uh, angle brackets uh, really uh, just like uh, writing HTML syntax. This gives the greater level of clarity while scanning the template itself. And it, uh, angle bracket component uh, introduced uh, named arguments. That is, I can uh, distinguish between argument and an attribute using the at symbol. Similarly, uh, the class properties need to be uh, annotated with this keyword. So, if I need to access a class property, it has to be coming from uh, this. And if I need to access an argu argument, it has to be uh, prepended with at symbol. So finally, we can uh, name our component uh, using single words. And uh, the framework will uh, come to know uh, what uh, come to know the differentiate between uh, um, built-in uh, component as well as the HTML attribute uh, with the help of uh, capitalized component names. So, if you uh, if you have uh, worked with the attribute bindings, uh, it will be uh, really complex. Uh, it will become really complex over time when we uh, try to map every single attribute uh, to the component. Uh, with the angle bracket components, you don't need to do that anymore because we can access the attributes uh, directly within the templates using split attribute syntax. Uh, the advantage of this syntax is that we can use uh, it anywhere inside the uh, uh, component template, not just the root element, and we can use as many times as we want, uh, not just uh, not just to one time on the root. So by, look, by looking at this uh, uh, snippet, uh, we'll, we'll, we, we cannot uh, tell what these uh, handlebar expressions are without looking into the other part of the applications. But with the Octane template, it will be really expli explicit. The first name is an argument, the uh, full name is a class field, create user is a uh, component and capitalize user is a helper. So we can uh, rename our counter component to be just counter, we can add uh, at symbol for arguments and this for uh, class fields. So track properties. Tracks, track properties are nothing but uh, properties uh, whose values are, uh, need to be updated uh, to the uh, DOM as soon as the value gets updated. Actually, we got uh, this mechanism uh, from uh, early days using the uh, set method. If we set up a particular property into a class, the template uh, code will uh, automatically re-render uh, re uh, without any extra work. But then why is this uh, tracker, new tracker decorator? Because uh, we can tell the framework that uh, 
uh, this particular uh, field is going to be uh, going to have an effect on weave layer and uh, the framework need not to watch every single cl class fields uh, uh, to under uh, react them uh, and uh, react to them uh, whereas uh, it, it uh, can only uh, uh, watch on the tracker properties and uh, update uh, update the update those alone so the updates will be really faster also since we have annotated them already we don't need to use set method anymore uh, we can use the native js syntax as well this one is the uh, is my, my favorite and cool feature about uh, track properties we don't need to uh, use dependency dependency keys anymore for computer properties because cater uh, will automatically recomputed once the tracked property access inside updated so since we are we are going to uh, use the count uh, property on on the template we need to rotate them with tracked we don't need to uh, use uh, uh, dependency keys for computer properties and we don't need to use set for uh, updating the values so glimmer components uh, glimmer component is, is a simpler component model uh, but we are having a, a ember component model for really a long time and it is well sophisticated one uh, the reason for uh, uh, for inventing a new component model is that the, the old component model is uh, too much it has a, a bunch of uh, properties methods events are binded to them and uh, it, it actually dilutes the clarity of the comp component model so that's why a ember component model has been released uh, this uh, component model will contain only three properties and two, uh, two life, cycle, life cycle hooks all, all the other functions have been uh, um, handed over to the application code itself so have you ever uh, messed up with those uh, class name and class name binding uh, attributes because uh, a yeah, classic ember component model uh, wrap every component with a div div development and uh, those development can be customized using these uh, uh, APIs we don't need to do that anymore because we don't have any uh, root element for uh, glimmer components and uh, we ca uh, obviously we cannot use those uh, APIs as well those logic needs to be uh, transferred to the uh, template and th and uh, because of this the templates will look more explicit and uh, clear also we have a new uh, this dot arcs property uh, this dot arc property will contain every uh, named argument that has been passed to the uh, component so we have uh, passed the max count uh, uh, argument from uh, from the invocation so we can access that uh, max count via args uh, so because of this uh, new uh, invocations uh, we can distinguish easily distinguish between which is uh, the class field which is the arguments in the template in the js class itself also this uh, uh, args property is a uh, immutable object so oh, we cannot uh, mutate an argument inside a component and uh, if we try to do that ember will throw an error uh, saying that it is an uh, it is not extensible so it uh, truly emphasizes the model, uh, idea of uh, data down and action app um, so we don't we don't uh, really have a way to violate them now so uh, the conversion of uh, ember component to glimmer component at this stage is really simple is you just need to uh, uh, import the component model from uh, glimmer package and need to uh, access the max count property from the arcs and yes we have successfully uh, converted our uh, components uh, classic ember component uh, uh, to a glimmer component and uh, the template looks uh, more explicit and clear whereas the js class looks uh, much cleaner compared to the uh, classic ember component model and uh, these are the things i'm uh, excited about ember uh, for for the uh, next upcoming years and tom uh, released uh, ember roadmap rfc uh, today a couple of days back so check them out if you haven't already because uh, it contains a, lo a lot of great things so i refer these materials thank you Ember data. Actually, uh, Ember data is a little bit far behind the Octane release because uh, we uh, we just uh, had uh, even a uh, model import uh, recently. Both because uh, so we don't have much uh, uh, new features with, with respect to Ember data, but the team has uh, started to work on that. But uh, 
uh, I feel empathy data is a little bit uh, tough to me. I have used it. Uh, okay. Um, uh, compared to the native convention, uh, I feel it is uh, uh, due to that relationship model. Mm -hmm. I have felt uh, it is a little bit tough. Uh, what do you think? Actually, uh, relation, as you said, the relationship, relationship model is the only tough thing about Ember, Ember data. Actually, we don't uh, use uh, uh, Ember data much uh, in our applications. We, we have our own Ember uh, model library uh, to interact with the network. So, I don't have much to uh, about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Google.